What's up guys, my name is Jake and welcome back to Cancelled Episode 10. This is the show where we look into everything and anything that was eventually cancelled. Jurassic Park is one of the most iconic films of all time, especially from the 1990s, a unique era in modern cinema. The film went on to be a box office hit, and naturally, the studio wanted more. However, you might not know that there is a long history of production trouble and never made sequels in the Jurassic Park series. So today, let's dive a little deeper into the interesting and in some cases bizarre sequels that were ultimately cancelled. This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. You can get access to it as well as Nebula when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description below. On June 9th, 1993, Jurassic Park premiered to the public with huge fanfare. Spielberg brought Michael Crichton's book to life with an enticing plot, fun characters, and amazing visual effects. The film captured the imaginations of millions of people, including myself, all around the globe, and coupled with the iconic John Williams score, the film was deemed an immediate classic. Universal Studios had a hit on their hands, and the movie became the highest grossing film of all time, making over a billion dollars adjusted for inflation. Jurassic Park was a summer blockbuster movie, and with that level of interest and success, Universal understandably wanted more. There was already a Jurassic Park attraction in development at Universal Studios, but perhaps even more exciting was the second movie on the way. Michael Crichton had released a second book called The Lost World in 1995. Spielberg ultimately signed on to return as director for the second film, and production began soon afterwards. With a budget of $73 million, $10 million more than the first film, The Lost World Jurassic Park was released in theaters on May 23rd, 1997. The picture ultimately made over $600 million, yet got mixed reviews. You might start to understand just by how different tonally and plot-wise it was from the first film. It centers around Ian Malcolm, played by the returning Jeff Goldblum, traveling to Site B, after he finds out John Hammond had sent his girlfriend to document the island to try and get the government to try and stop exploiting the dinosaurs from his former company. Okay, so yeah, I'm sure you can tell that this film's plot is a little more strung together than the first, and this final film shows that. The movie was simply not as well-rounded as the first, and perhaps nothing more shows that than the final third act. From here on, there are spoilers. So, the ending of The Lost World involves a T-Rex actually being shipped off the island to San Diego, and then ensuing chaos. But that ending always felt somewhat jarring in regards to the previous first and second acts of the film, and that's because there was already a different ending written in the script. The way the film was supposed to end was in the workers' village, when the main characters are trying to call for help and escape from a raptor attack. This sequence was supposed to be much longer and actually conclude the movie. The finale was supposed to involve a helicopter Petrodon battle scene when they are being lifted off to safety. However, Spielberg and the film's writer David Kep had toyed around with the idea of altering the ending and involving a dinosaur running loose on the mainland. Ultimately, just a few weeks before shooting, the last minute change was made to go this direction, and that's the ending that made the theatrical cut. It certainly made the film a little more disjointed, but it actually became the favorite scene for most people. This sudden script change, however, was nowhere near the production troubles of the next Jurassic Park entry. After the release of The Lost World, Spielberg had more or less decided he would not like to return as director for another entry in the series, citing it as too much of a task and him wanting to allow other directors to share their visions. However, Spielberg did sign on to produce, and him along with allegedly Michael Crichton brainstormed the story. However, again allegedly, Crichton ended up exiting the project after just a few days of not coming up with any ideas. Craig Rosenberg was then brought on to write the film, and in June of 1998, Universal Pictures announced that Jurassic Park 3 was now in production with a release date of around 2000. By the next year, Rosenberg had completed the first draft of Jurassic Park 3's script. In this first version, the story revolves around a group of college students who became marooned on Isla Sorna, Site B from the previous film. Not really much is known about this early draft, but once Universal signed Joe Johnston on board to direct the film, he immediately didn't like the idea. 
So Peter Butchman was brought on board to write a second script, which went in a completely different direction. Butchman's script centered around Dr. Grant from the first film and his colleague being a brand new character named Billy Brennan. They are sent to Costa Rica after a series of mysterious killings thought to have been from escaping dinosaurs. Dr. Grant is joined by various other characters, notably including a millionaire named Paul Roby and his son, along with a naturalist named Simone. The team's plane eventually crash lands on Isla Sorna, and the group needs to survive and find their way off the island. This script also included a pretty intense scene where they're setting up a temporary base overnight inside an in-gen lab and fighting off attacking raptors. So production went forward on this, signing Sam Neill on to reprise his role as Dr. Grant, as well as William H. Macy to play the millionaire. The working title for the film was Jurassic Park 3 Breakout, and the release date was pushed to July 2001. However, Johnston and Spielberg apparently weren't really satisfied with the script, as Joe had thought it was too complicated to get Grant back on the island. David Kep from the first two films was brought in to consult, and naturally he agreed with the two and suggested a different plotline. So, rather unbelievably, in July of 2000, the entire script was thrown out just five weeks before filming was scheduled to begin. Reportedly, over $18 million was already spent on props, sets, and costumes. Remember, for the other script, David Kep's idea was to reformat the film as a rescue mission, and Johnston approved that idea and assigned Alexander Payne with Jim Taylor to rewrite the now-rejected second draft script. The two were assigned to restructure the film with a new simplified plot, while also trying to incorporate the elements that had already been built for the previous script. They had to do this in just four weeks. But as filming began on the set schedule, the script was never really completed. In an interview with About Inc., Johnston said, quote, We shot pages that eventually went into the final script, but we didn't have a document. He later went on to say, We never had a story that had a beginning, middle, and end while we were making the film. As you could probably imagine, this turned into a huge mess as the production had no planned path, and they were just essentially making it up as they went along. William H. Macy put it best when he was quoted saying, Who launched a $100 million ship without a rudder? And who's getting fired for this? Things were getting so bad that Joe Johnston had even wanted to quit as director. But regardless, the production pressed on, and after a return to Hawaii for extensive reshoots for the ending of the film, Jurassic Park 3 was finally finished. On July 18th, 2001, Jurassic Park 3 was released in US theaters to once again mixed reviews. However, it was certainly liked less than the previous two films. To the pitcher's credit though, Joe Johnston, regardless of whether or not he put himself in this position, had really salvaged much of the film into something at least cohesive. It's not really a good movie, but there are things to like about it, mainly the incredible Stan Winston animatronics bringing the animals to life. It's incredible to think that the majority of what ended up on screen in terms of costumes, dinosaur animatronics, sets, and even characters were all made for an entirely different version of the movie. Given the enormous mess that the production had been in, the movie was somewhat salvaged when it finally released, and that set the path for the fourth installment in the franchise. So rather quickly after the third film had come out, Universal and now executive producer Steven Spielberg began talking about what the next iteration of the franchise should look like. Spielberg actually came up with a pretty great idea and had William Monahan begin writing a script. Apparently this film would involve Sam Neill, Jeff Goldblum, and even Richard Attenborough reprising their roles in this new film. The plot focused similarly around what Jurassic Park 3 was supposed to be about, with the animals finding their way off the island and causing mayhem on the mainland. This picture was supposed to enter production in 2004 with a 2005 release date. William Monahan, however, was poached to work on another script, and the Jurassic Park 4 treatment was left in limbo. Amblin Entertainment was now left with this partially done script, so they brought in John Sayles to rewrite it in 2004. However, 
This is where things start to go off the rails. John Sayles ended up changing pretty much everything about the main story, in which his screenplay centered around Nick Harris, an ex-Navy SEAL who was sent to Isla Nublar by John Hammond to retrieve the Barbacel canister full of DNA from the first film. However, the island is now under control of the Grendo Corporation. It is later found out that they have been cloning their own breed of dinosaurs that are able to follow human commands. These dinosaurs were to be used for military purposes to fight terrorists. By the end of the film, there would be an ending fight scene where parachuting dinosaurs wearing body armor would attack a group of evil bad guys. Yes, you heard me right. This is absolutely insane, and this is a real script that was eventually leaked off of Steven Spielberg's email during this time. If you want, you can read it for yourself. I'll leave a link in the description below. I think most people can agree that this script and general idea is pretty bad. It's unclear as to what internally was happening during this time, as all news regarding the film was stalled. Eventually, Spielberg came out and said that Joe Johnston would be his quote, go-to Jurassic guy now, and also said a new script was being written. Believe it or not, the concepts get even more crazy from here. So Joe Johnston allegedly began working on a new concept somewhat building off of the John Sayles script. He was thinking about something that would involve genetically modified dinosaurs with human DNA. Concept artist Carlos Hunte was hired to draw up some sketches of what they might look like, and yeah, it's pretty unbelievable how far these concepts came from the original 1993 film. These drawings were eventually leaked online not too long after, and Jurassic Park fans, along with media outlets, were both outraged and utterly confused, since this seemingly legitimate direction of the fourth film was so jarring. However, it's important to note that there isn't really any evidence of studio involvement in this, and it's more likely that the idea was merely just conceptual and made for fun. It was widely reported around this time that this was the direction the franchise was headed in, and speculation became blurred with actual facts. Jurassic Park 4 at this point had been delayed once Joe Johnston reportedly left in 2007 and remained in a state of limbo. Eventually, Johnston returned to the development and stated in 2010 that JP4 would be the beginning of a new trilogy. After rejected scripts in 2011, Rick Jaffa and Amanda Silver, who were just hot off of Rise of the Planet of the Apes, were hired to write a screenplay that incorporated some of Spielberg's ideas like having a functioning park. With a finished script, Colin Trevorrow, who had only directed two theatrical films prior, was hired to direct the new blockbuster. He ultimately rewrote much of the script, and finally, a finished screenplay of a Jurassic Park 4 film was in production, now called Jurassic World. On June 12, 2015, Jurassic World had premiered after over 13 years of development, cancellations, and insane concepts. The fourth film, which essentially was a soft reboot into its own trilogy, ended up making over $1.6 billion. The film was followed by Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which was pretty bad, and soon a third film called Jurassic World Dominion is slated for release. That movie is set to bring back most of the original cast from the first film, including Laura Dern, Sam Neill, and Jeff Goldblum, which I have to say is quite intriguing. The plot points and ideas explored in these new Jurassic World movies are kind of interesting to see where they began in the creative process. I think it's extremely stupid, but the idea of weaponized dinosaurs can be traced all the way back to the John Sayles script in 2004. That concept is heavily touched upon in both Jurassic World films. I'll be honest, and I'm sure you can guess that I'm not the biggest fan of any of the sequels after the second. I think Jurassic Park 3 was relatively harmless considering the production mess it was. Jurassic World, despite many people liking it, was a huge disappointment for me for many, many reasons. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom... I don't think I even need to explain why it's bad. Now, of course, everyone is allowed to like these films, but in my personal opinion, I think the glossy, CGI-looking, hollow new films 
don't really give me the same feelings of adventure and fun the first did. Jurassic World especially for me was just so uninspired, and the entire premise of using dinosaurs for military purposes is just so stupid, and wasted such potential with the park being open. Even The Lost World I think had some charm and energy. Perhaps not taking from the first, but standing on its own. It being the only Jurassic Park sequel with John Williams' brilliant scores, I think really sets it apart. Though, that movie does have its moments. When you look back at the development process of the Jurassic Park sequels, it's amazing how much was cancelled and never came to be. Now, to be fair, much of Hollywood films at this caliber goes through many different creative steps, but I think Jurassic Park seems like such a simple concept for it to go through so many wacky ideas. Remember, the series started out like this, and somehow along the way, it ended with Joe Johnston commissioning dino-human hybrid sketches. I have no idea. But now as we look back, the many scripts of Jurassic Park 4 all make you wonder, what if? But it is interesting to look into the many movie ideas that were all in some stages of development, yet most were eventually cancelled. If you're a fan of my videos, then there is a good chance you may enjoy other educational creators on this platform. Well, I definitely am, and I am pleased to say today that I am now a part of the streaming service created by those people called Nebula. There we can try out new ideas that might not work on YouTube like Tom Scott's original Money, and features videos ad-free, including this one, and replaced by extra content. It's a fantastic streaming service, which I am sure in the future I will be experimenting new content on, and premiering videos there first. The best way to get Nebula is through CuriosityStream. The two platforms have teamed up so you get both for the price of one. CuriosityStream on its own is a fantastic service packed with thousands of documentaries. Everything from the Florida Everglades, which is one that I loved, to Ancient Earth, which reminded me of my childhood watching Walking with Dinosaurs. Both platforms are great, and I'm sure it'll interest you if you enjoy my type of content. You can get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month. But for this video, you can get 26% off an annual plan if you sign up at curiositystream.com bsf, and use the promo code bsf. It's a tremendous value for what you get, and I sincerely can't wait to take part on the Nebula platform in the future, and I hope you sign up to join me. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching.